Hey, everybody. This is David Skreek. I hope you're all doing well. So I'm doing these a bunch of these here on, um, well, I guess it's uh, the 22nd. And um, so I'm doing this update. Uh, I'll probably do another, trying to do four updates today, another update for the weekend. Um, uh, oh, no, my update for the weekend, three updates, sorry. I'm going to do my, my my great legends of whatever investing series, which I'll post on the weekend. And then I'm going to do our, my members update. So, um, and then after that, I probably won't be posting till the 27th. I want a few days off. I want to watch some football, enjoy the holidays, et cetera, et cetera. So um, today we're going to look at gold again in the stock chart of the day. Uh, and a couple of our sponsor companies. It's perfect timing because they are gold companies. Um, so um, um, that's for our football pool that I have. Um, um, so anyhow, um, yeah, this is, so we're going to look at gold. So is gold finally going to break out? That's kind of like the, the title of this video. You can see that we've gotten back again to this like 270, 275 to 2100 range. You know, um, we look at the GLD markets now open. It's 944. You can see oh, we're right here. So we're up over $20 in gold today. Great move. And we're right there. We're right at the intraday high of, um, you know, a few uh, weeks ago. So are we finally going to break out in gold? And of course, if we kind of look at like a 10 year chart, we can really see it here. Like we're right here. Right there, there's been this kind of triple top, you know, and this is the fourth attempt. So I think we are going to finally break out. Obviously, the Fed sort of, um, you know, moving um, has, uh, you know, or pivoting is, is a huge factor. And like I've talked, I've shown a whole bunch of uh, videos of this in the past. Gold and gold stocks do outperform, and I think personally, I'm I'm set up pretty well now. You know, um, I'll talk about this more in the members section. That's what we're going to talk about today. I, I know one of my members wanted me to do dividend stocks for the members section, but I'll, I'll do that probably for my year end, um, you know, or even maybe the first one of the year because I'm um, my year end. I kind of want to do a, a year preview of what what I what to expect in 2024. I'm not really big on yearly predictions because I think you have to go for the flow and see what's happening. And you know, like in 2022, for example, I was very bearish, and then. It was obvious by the fall that the market wasn't going to fall anymore. So I kind of got rid of a lot of shorts this year in the summer. I, you know, I was I was getting bullish in the spring. And then in the summer, I was like, you know what? The market's looking a little toppy, could correct. And then I, I kept saying, if it did not go lower by the end of December, that, uh, or sorry, end of October, we would, you know, kind of get out of a lot of shorts, which, which we did. So, um, you know, so, but it does, it looks very similar to kind of this 2014 to 2018 period where gold kept going up what's 125 on them. Or 130 on the HU or sorry on the GLD, but you know if we go look at gold itself, it was about 14, 1450, I think. Yeah, it was about 1400. You can see 1400 that you know it kept boom. It was like one, two, three, and actually just like kind of now, I don't know if you consider that the fourth attempt because this one here, but you know really, about the fourth attempt, it really moved. Now that took nearly five years. I don't think this one will take five years, but this is already three years in the making. So um. You know, um, I think this is going to really, really um, kind of um, uh, uh, move here. I think I, I'm looking at 2100, and you know, obviously this intraday high that we hit overnight, 2150 or so. I'm looking at really 2100, a close above 2100 to really what I'm looking for. And we're only thirty dollars away from that. So, um, and of course that means you know the gold stocks are doing well. We'll look at the HUI. They're coming. You know, they can see they're still kind of in a downtrend, but they're starting to come up. We're up over two percent today, and we can look at the GDX. Um, it looks like we got this excellent basing pattern and um, it looks like they're about to start outperforming. So, and again, early on in that rate cycle, th this is when you want to be in gold and precious metals. Now, 12 or 24 months from now, I'd have to reassess the situation, but I can tell you early on in the rate cut cycle, you know, the Fed loosening is when you want to be in that, that stock, the uh, overweight, uh, the precious metal. So Nevada King recently had some um, uh, news. This is one of our sponsor companies. I've always said this company is kind of, dear to my heart if i can be a little cheesy because um i helped uh orchestrate the sale and the movement of the property the atlanta mine into this with my friend chris Krupe. may he rest in peace chris used to be the uh, ceo of paramount gold unfortunately he um he um passed away uh just over three years ago um um uh, uh so um so anyway I, I would like this to work out for chris he was a great guy um he used to visit me on the bombas all the time we always had a great time. Um, he was a very, more, very generous guy as well. So anyhow, uh, you can see that uh, Nevada King completed 372 holes, totaling you know nearly 7,000, 70,000 meters. 
blah, blah, blah. And, and this get, kind of talks to the results um, from 168 holes uh, of the phase two program are now currently pending. So um, I, I'm going to let you read this for yourself. I don't want to read a press release here. And, um, you know, they, there's have, they've had some excellent uh, uh, mineralization, which caused the stock to spike back in October, even in the market was much worse in gold stocks than it was now in uh, October. And um, I'm going to post a link to this. This is um, uh, Coraline economics report. And, um, they um, did um, uh, my, with my friend Colin Cattell, who's also the CEO of Nevada King. They did um, um, uh, an interview with him. So if you want to listen to it here, um, I think the interview's um, about twenty four minutes. So I'll I'll put the link to this. So please listen to this if you like Nevada King. I think a lot of you did. Nevada King is about flat from where we did um, the IPO financing. Uh, but of course, it's really not that bad because what gold stocks have done the last few years. So you can see it here. Yeah, I think the IPO was right around early mid forties and it's, you can see it's 40 cents here today. And um, this kind of 50 cent area here, I think is the resistance. And then it can go up back to like maybe about 80 or something like that. So um, I still really like this. Uh, it's a past producing gold mine, the Atlanta mine. It has a resource. So they're building on the resource. Those are also kind of in this period when gold really moves out of its lows. Those are kind of my favorite deals as well is, um, uh, is, is, is companies that have, you know, a resource and they can build on it because you get the combination of the resource building higher and the price of the underlying asset, i.e. gold, what you're selling moving higher. So um, anyhow, so then also um, uh, in the news is Inca. So you can see Inca is inching higher here today. It's still a very cheap stock, 5.6 million market cap. So they were, they, they're they doing a financing they announced the the results they wanted. I think for those of you who are interested, if you own some Inca, the financing's ten cents, the full warrant at, at uh, fifteen cents. Um, so um, you know, um, so that's a pretty good, and the warrant's good for three years. So that's a pretty good deal uh, to do. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, especially at these, you know, you're already up thirty percent on the stock. You know, one thing I really liked. About Zinc Eight, by the way, for using those you in Zinc Eight, Zinc Eight did close uh, yes, yesterday. So, um, um, basically, yeah, one thing I really like about the warrant, uh, or sorry about this financing, you're in the money and you get a full warrant. So, it's really up to you if you want to do this. Um, I'm personally a little tapped out. <laughs> I've done a lot of these financings. This kind of just came up three days ago. So I'm just going to hold a position. I want to stay, sometimes you got to stay liquid too. You can't just all be tied up in four month holds, but I, you know, for anyone who wants to do it, I wish I had a little more of my, um, you know, my, uh, my speculative capital um, to do this thing. Right. So, um, um, uh, um, uh, you know, but um, you can see that. So they do, they're just raising a million dollars. Um, and if we go look at the other news, they reported November sales of 4.6 million. So again, like I've said over and over again, um, October was down a bit, a bit, but like you average out the two months to 7.3. So they're averaging like 3.5 to 4 million a month. And that's US dollars, by the way. So basically this company is, is doing, you know, 3.5, 4 million US a month. So you're talking 40 to 50 million US a, a year in sales. And, um, and, and basically like, um, uh, um, I, and this, the market cap is 5.6 million Canadian. So it makes no sense. You know, at some point that's got to come in. And of course they really have to acquire this loan so they can go to full capacity. I think right now they're about half capacity, 50%, 40 to 50% capacity. So once they get to full capacity, you know, they'll be doing 10 million or so in a month in sales. So, you know, they'll be, they'll be we're, we're talking, they'll be doing, you know, over a hundred million in sales a year. So um, I think this could really, really move and take off. So um, yeah, and it has at a big discount. So those are two gold plays too, for like, you know, with gold up, you can see almost $30 here. These are the future price here um, on Yahoo Finance. Everything's pretty ending the year pretty strong again. Um, but um, yeah, gold, especially up over 1.4%. So I'm really um, excited for the new year. To be honest, this is probably one of the worst years I've had in terms of the actual precious metals market. Like, uh, you know, you keep thinking it can't, you know, after when I started in the late nineties, when I was in my twenties, I was like, you know, I thought it was bad. Then goal was 250, 300. And of course, 2008, everything crashed. And there's been years where it's kind of been dead, but like, you know, 2013 when gold kind of tanked, it was kind of like, you know, like, like, like this has been as bad as every year. And I've talked to guys like brokers. I know that have been doing this for 40, 50 years. And they're like, 
Dave, this is as bad as I've ever seen it. And of course, if you're into maximum pessimism like me, this is when you want to buy. You know, you can buy a $5 million company that's doing 50 million US in sales, like 65 million Canadian in sales, right? You can you can buy things like that. You know, um, you can buy companies trading at a few dollars per ounce, et cetera. So anyhow, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, so the, I'll, I'll post the links to the interview for Nadia King and the the news for Inca One uh, below this uh, video. Um, so you'll have to go to, if you if you just watch these on YouTube, you have to go to addictedprofits.net and to the website link to uh, to click on those. So everybody take care. And um, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I'll be doing my members uh, one right after this.